Regenerative Ed is produced by Grounded Teaching and it's inspired by ah, oh, springtime. I feel so good. It's finally 80 degrees. <laughs> it's been a long winter here in Cleveland, folks. Oh, a long winter. And I'm just kind of starting to feel like I'm coming alive. Finally, finally, finally. And so, yeah, super happy to be coming to you today. Next week, we will continue with some interviews, um, kind of break our pattern series that we've been doing. Um, If you're just tuning in, this is the very last episode that recaps all of the things that we've been talking about having to do with looking at patterns in natural systems and maybe how they apply to our life just by appreciating the beauty of them and then also by thinking about the function and how we can maybe remove some of the linear industrial, um, you know, extractive, colonial, (laughs) patriarchal, all that stuff, white supremacist models that we have um, that are all a part of separation. Look at how ecosystems function instead. And what does that mean for our personal lives and our work lives and, um, you know, just how we have a mindset about things in general. And so that's kind of what we were doing over the last few episodes, um, everything that has a pattern by it. And so today we're recapping that. uh, And I'm bringing Jess along to do that with me because it's more fun with two. (laughs) And I've been talking by myself for a long time. So there. I'm really excited about our interview next week. It's going to be really great, really special. Yeah, hope you tune into that. A um, few announcements. If you're interested in We Are Verbs, we're about a week and a half in. You can join any time. As a podcast listener, you can join up for only a dollar, which is so cool. And then you get immediate access to the workshop that we recorded on Tuesday night and to the um, the workbook. And we have yoga sort of class coming up later on this month. Um, so lots of cool stuff. You get to meet with other people that are awesome. We talk about that a little bit more at, at the end of this recording with Jess. So if you want to join up for listening to the podcast uh, code for the first month, just to try it out, to totally try it out. It's only a dollar. Um, and you can use the code podcast monthly and check out our website. It's really beautiful. I'm really proud of it. Um, and that is linked in the show notes below. OK, without further ado, let's get into a recap of patterns. We'll go through each one and we'll talk a little bit more about we are verbs. Let's do it. Everybody, welcome to episode, oh goodness, is this 42? I think this is 42. Wee. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here. That ooey was Jess. <laughs> I'm here with Jess, my twin sister, co-founder of Grounded Teaching, high school English teacher. What else do you want to say, Jess? Hi. Yeah. We're sharing a microphone as per usual because she's sitting right next to me. And so we're kind of doing this back and forth. Back and forth. <laughs> Sit you with the, with the microphone. Sorry about that. Um. So we are coming here, and I thought it would be more fun to do it with two of us instead of just me, kind of wrapping up patterns and what we've been learning about patterns. If you are just tuning in, this is the wrap up of a series that we've been doing. It's sort of like a workshop in podcast form, kind of experimenting with a free workshop series in that way. And we talked about how living system patterns, patterns that we see in natural systems, are helpful for thinking about our life, for thinking about how we are in the world, are helpful for thinking about how we design interactions with students, interactions with other community members, how we design our schools, how we design our classroom lessons, all that stuff. And so we're looking at things like spirals, waves, and things that I'm going to recount here in just a little bit with the help of Jess. And we'll just talk a little bit more about that. Then we're going to share at the end a few questions that we've gotten about We Are Verbs. Okay, so I'm going to go through each one of these patterns one at a time, and that's just kind of to pique your interest. If you didn't listen to all of them and something resonates, you're like, oh, maybe I should go back and listen to that one, or maybe I want to re-listen to that one, or maybe it just makes you think about something on your drive home, and then you look out for it out the window, which is cool. So uh, the first one is spirals, and just you just chime in if there's something that resonates with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That's that's what you're doing here. Um, Okay, so spirals really were about strength and protection and efficiency and expansion. And we talked about using spirals to help us have strength in replacing, um, you know, even downward spirals like bad days. We talked about spirals uh, as this way of expanding upward. And 
we talked about spirals as like unwinding stories that have been gripping onto us because of that strength feature that spirals have. We talked about creating infrastructure. We talked about uh, creating all sorts of structures, like structures for meetings based on spirals, and then some other like real concrete things. Um, was there anything that resonated with you with spirals, Jess? Yeah, I guess. And we kind of talked about this last night, too, at the first We Are Verbs core meeting, but that spirals are like this form of iteration, and it kind of allows you to let go of any fear of an end because uh, you know that it can. it's not an end necessarily, that we're uh, kind of in this circular spiral of time, and we can continue to iterate and grow. And yeah. there's just... Then, then it becomes like opportunity and not so much a end point of failure, but like an interesting evolution, essentially. Yeah, yeah iterative work, right? So that's spirals. The next one is waves. Um, waves are about uh, really thinking about where we're rigid and uh, where we could have some more flexible movement. So it's really about that flow of energy. And it was a good one to listen to if you're considering how your energy flows and if you're feeling a little bit too rigid if you feel like the patterns in your life are a little bit too mechanical meaning like same energy input and output every day right and you're not really following these waves of energy flow or not thinking about that as a model this can be a really helpful podcast was just was there anything yeah the, just the discussion idea that i really liked from this one the literal discussion idea that i could use in my classes with kids is this concept or the metaphor or the imagery of tossing a rock into the middle and then letting the ideas kind of ripple out the discussion ripple out to like the second ring of students and then the third ring of students that they're all like sitting in a circle and if uh, you could probably put that in the show notes too if anyone oh yeah i made a hand up for that oh, for our mighty networks yeah, i'll yeah, put that, that in the show really, notes really helpful really yeah helpful. cool Okay. Uh, the third one was branches, which is one of my favorites to talk about. Most people recognize this pattern right away if you're like, okay, what are some patterns in natural systems? We think about branches. Um, this is a classic example of thinking about efficiency and reciprocity. And a tree itself can be a really amazing metaphor that we can all live by <laughs> just if we're just thinking about roots, right? I mean, how many times you've been like root down or, you know, like tree pose, right? And because it really works, but that the interface between the roots and the leaves with other ecosystems was something that I thought was really interesting as I was digging into this podcast and then the exchange there, that that reciprocity. Yeah, I just I just thought that like one of the cool things is just the simplicity of the rule of when a branch hits another branch, it stops growing. And I just thought that that was like, it's just such a simple thing, but I think it can have so many applications in our personal professional lives too. Yeah, like because when... When there is a rule that's that simple, but it's such a complex system, like a tree, like a branch, but that rule is so simple, it kind of makes us feel like we can have some simple rules that guide our lives too. Cool. Um, okay, up next, streamlines. Uh, this one felt really practical for me, but also really big picture. We talked about things like values <laughs> and imagination and our most precious resource of time. And it also kind of felt like an inverse of what we talk about with some of these other patterns where we're thinking about, okay, where can I apply this pattern? Because it feels like um, it feels like everything else is too mechanical. Streamlines almost feels like we went the opposite. It's like the one thing that it's one pattern that the industrial system really latched onto. <laughs> it was like, we can streamline everything. So in addition to looking at, you know, where there are some ways that we can streamline our energy if we look at our values and think about what's aligned. We also were looking at where are things streamlined that maybe don't need to be streamlined. Like where have people made decisions to streamline things for us that we're like, no, I don't want that to be streamlined. And there's a ton of implications in that for education. We talk about a few of those. Any reflections yeah, on just that? I, that reflection of you know is this intentional like am I streamlining something intentionally because it is aligned to my values like you said is that where I want to spend my time cool um up next we have cloud forms and this one felt really metaphorical to me so it's like you have a big cumulonimbus cloud it's letting you know that it's there right something's coming um and we talked about three different types of clouds and and their forms Above all the other ones, this is the one for me that I have paid so much more attention to just clouds and the beauty of clouds since doing that podcast. Uh, maybe it's because I see clouds every day almost, but um, yeah, I, you know, this one wasn't really a, a matter of function for me. It was just more of appreciating, appreciating clouds. Yeah, I got to say, there's a storm a coming. <laughs> <Exactly. Yeah. laughs> 
I did that too. I was like, oh, cumulonimbus. <laughs> well, Cirrus looks like something's going to change. <laughs> okay. Uh, two, uh, three more. Lobes. So lobes is not about straight lines. It's about increasing surface area, not getting somewhere as fast as possible, which we talked about last night a little bit in our We Are Verbs meeting too. But yeah, it's really about that thinking about, you know, maybe the best design here is not necessarily a straight line, right? Yeah, and about beauty and softness and all those mm. other cool things that are wrapped up in lobes. Yeah, I mean, beauty really makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And I think this is one pattern. I mean, everything's be spirals are beautiful, you know, branches are beautiful. But um, this is another one that made me think about uh, the, the function of beauty, too. Not to break everything down into a function also, but just that mm -hmm. that there's a reason why things are beautiful. Um, okay, nets. Nets. Um, I've been thinking a lot about this one too. Maybe these ones because they're more recent. But I've been thinking about the things I just try and try and try to do the same way over and over again instead of maybe taking a different approach, spreading that energy out or diversifying the angle from which I'm coming. Um, I've also been thinking more about spreading my net to catch energy. Like, because there are moments and parts of my life where I don't realize maybe that that I'm not, that I don't even have a net out to catch that energy. I know you've been thinking a little bit about the protective side of things, like with the parrotfish and taking yeah, risks. I really love the parrotfish. I just thought that was so cool how the, like, the mucus came out at night to protect the fish, but it only needed it. it like, you can't walk around with the glob of mucus surrounding you all day and night. Well, fish couldn't walk anyways. Fish couldn't swim. <laughs> But I love that you don't have to, like, protect yourself. Um, like, you can't just live in a bubble, literally, like, all yeah. the time. For yeah. protection. Yep. Um, and then lastly, this one is near and dear to my heart, which I wasn't, when I planned this, when I planned this series, I really didn't think that scatter would be the one that was near and dear to my heart. But I bet my husband could tell you otherwise. <laughs> um, this one has hit the hardest for me over the past week, and I've thought about it a lot. You know, why am I doing the things that I'm doing? What if I don't see a direct impact in the things that I'm doing? Uh, what is the purpose of scattering my work? I mean, even with this podcast, right? Like, what's the point of it? Um, sometimes we don't hear back or, you know, we I, I, there's no way to know how things land all the time, right? And what I realized after going through that process of researching and writing the podcast and experiencing, uh, thinking about it a little bit more deeply afterwards is that, um, I'm really aligned to right now what I feel like I should be doing and that I can detach a little bit from the outcome in that. Um, and, you know, even last night we were talking about releasing control and that was the big sticking point that folks that were in the workshop were talking about is just surrendering, right? And how do we just surrender and start something new and scatter something out there when we don't know what's going to happen? But the, the thing about scattering that's so cool is the principle that – when things scatter, that's when the imagination happens. That's when a seed falls next to another seed and you never knew that they were companion plants, but now they are, you know, and that wouldn't have happened had you just planted everything really specifically in the place. Like you have to have some of that chaos in order to have some of that, that imagination, that beauty. Yeah. It just seems like, I don't know, scatter just seems like such a magical pattern. Scatter pattern. Um, cool. So that was the pattern series. There's more information on the website about stuff like that. If you um, are interested, if you haven't listened to it, well, maybe you could go back and listen to one if it caught your attention. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we we're sort of getting into the rhythm of that. We're going to break that rhythm with this podcast a little bit. But uh, speaking of getting into the rhythm of things, uh, we're just getting into the rhythm of we are verbs. We're like a week and a half into our first month, yeah, which I is yeah, which is it's been really fun so far. So Jess is going to ask me some questions and I'm going to answer them. <laughs> we're just doing we're just doing Q&A okay. here. I put your questions here. Okay. okay. These are the ones that we got from folks. So All right. here so you hold the mic. Question one. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> See, as it's written here. Like, what is what is we are verbs? Um, so <laughs> this is funny. Uh, it is a community made and created for different educators. And by different, I mean you're thinking about ways that you interact and ways that you do things with your students. Um, 
outside of a paradigm from maybe how you were taught. That might mean that you're a whole homeschool parent. That might mean that you are a pod teacher. That might mean that you're a public school science teacher in the eighth grade. That might mean that you are an elementary teacher or an early childhood educator or an outdoor educator. We are bringing together all types of educators because in that cross-pollination, we're going to find a lot more commonalities so that we can help kids. And that's what we're trying to do. And we're trying to think about what the purpose of education actually is so that we can help to create a different type of education from the people that matter the most for kids, which is teachers. I love that. Not Am I allowed to comment? Or not? Just yes. last night, just last night in our, uh, at our first meeting, it, it was just really cool to see all of the different backgrounds and types of education. I, I was expecting maybe, you know, one person to be a homeschool mom or something, but there were everyone was had a different background in education it was so cool to be in that community it just felt so different to me so um yeah it was super cool that part of it was super cool yeah i'm really excited about getting all sorts of educators together because we all have the same goal right yeah. just different ways to approach it which is right you yeah. know we're we all, need we're to gonna... we need to hear from each other yeah. so that we can all be better yeah yeah so i think it's cool um i hope that if you're in the group you think it's cool and i hope that if you're thinking about joining the group that might be a reason why all right you want to ask this oh, up? question two <laughs> Is it for me? <laughs> uh, that depends. Sorry, I scripted these out. This is kind of cheesy because Jess is reading them off of the questions that I wrote down. But these are the ones that we got. So um, is it for is it for you? Well, I, I think that, that depends. If you're an educator that works with kids um, as your primary thing that you do for most of the day or as a major part of your life, then I would say that it's for you. Uh, the folks that we have in the group right now are some of the most imaginative creative, dedicated educators that I feel really lucky to have in a group. And I mean, that is the, Jess and I were talking about this morning, like texting back and forth, like, oh my gosh, this is really the people that I want to be in a group with. So um, it's pretty cool. Question number three, what comes with the membership if I sign up? As we pull members and as we have conversations about what folks really want, this is going to grow. Um, but right now what comes is a monthly curriculum. That monthly curriculum has uh, two real things to it. Every At the beginning of each month, you get a monthly workbook, and that workbook um, kind of takes you through the month. The workbook for May is available right now, so you can get it even if you weren't there on the first. You can download it at any time, but it just takes you week by week. There's reflection questions. There's some fun stuff in there. There's some student application, that sort of thing. But it really has to do with the monthly theme is the thing that anchors everything. And then with that monthly theme, around the second week every month, we have a uh, core workshop, and that core workshop has to do with the theme. And the core workshop digs into some things around like a regenerative mindset. It also talks about some applications for students and learning and how to you know be an educator that has that mindset that sort of thing so for example for this week we're talking or for this month we're talking about um starting cultivating beginnings and uh, redefining endings and so that's sort of the theme that took us through or that is taking us through the month and then we have a live q a um which is where uh, we can answer some questions either as a group or i can answer questions um to the best of my ability and really think about practical application, um, you know, with my experience in coaching and working in schools and working with homeschool parents and that sort of thing, really thinking about, okay, so it's good theory, but what about where the rubber hits the road? And then Great, we can so work. that's kind of like, hey, we talked about this last week, but I don't know what that would look like in my Yeah, like what, is, what do I actually do yeah. with that? And that's where we kind of fix some of those practical things. Because there's a lot of tension, especially if you work in like a traditional school setting, mm -hmm. to apply some things um, that may feel like they're outside of your control, but sometimes... Sometimes we even have more control than we think. Cool. Love that. And then sometimes there's like special things too, right? Like oh. Cassandra is going to be giving a yoga class this month. Tell us about that. Yes. Cassandra is, uh, is a local embodiment and yoga teacher here that I respect greatly. And she is going to come in and work with our theme for the month to help people in an hour long class hour and 15 minutes yeah and that's included with the membership too. and that's on the theme too of yep. beginnings and ending yep it's all based on the theme and then some you know we'll think about expanding certain things as we go along awesome love that um okay does it cost money yep it does cost money um it's 34 a month for now which is our initial founders rate and um 
Right now, you can try it out as a podcast listener for a buck for the first month. Uh, and then you could be grandfathered in at $34 forever. So we wouldn't ever change that fee. Um, also, I think it's really important to note that if you don't have the money, uh, but you feel really passionate about this work, we always encourage you just to email us. And we can we can talk about that on email. Love that. Okay. So how is this organized? Is this like on a platform? Yeah. Is this like, how is it organized? <laughs> Everything is organized on a platform called Circle. It's sort of like a Slack or Facebook, but a lot better. Pretty intuitive. We've used Mighty Networks in the past for um, our regenerative ed community. And it was kind of hard to navigate sometimes. This is really straightforward and pretty easy to, to join. That's where you get the community aspect. You can introduce yourself on there. You can see who else is on there. Uh, that's where we keep all the recordings for things and the workbooks and the resources and all that stuff. Cool. And there's an app for it too, right? Yeah. If, you're on, if you have an iPhone, there's an app for it. If you have Android, um, it's easy enough to get to through our website, but they are coming out with an app soon. Cool. Can I join at any time? Because I know this is like a monthly thing. So can people join at any time? Yep. You can join at any time. Um, we didn't want to discourage anybody from joining uh, when they'd like to join. Um, and each Friday, I make a little post to introduce anybody who's joined new since last Friday, just so that it like pops up on people's radars. And they're like, oh, this is a new person here. Um, and you can feel welcomed into the group. Cool. Uh, if I'm a school leader, can I sign up all of my teachers, like almost as a professional development or professional cohort? So... The thing about that is that I and we um, really want to protect the group space to be a place. I, okay, I've led thousands of hours of professional development in traditional public schools, and we really want the, the space to be a place where people are engaged and really want to be there. So I would say that uh, mandating it for your teachers, there's probably a better route to go than this group and we can talk about that if you'd like but if you share it with your teachers and people want to do it and are excited about it then yeah definitely mm -hmm. and we have a group rate i think it's it's on the website i think it's a study group and it, you get 20 or 25 percent off so if, if you join with two or more people Oh, cool. So I could like join up with a couple teacher friends and yeah. then do it together. Yeah. And if it's easier for principals, there's an annual rate as well. But, you know, also also if you if like we said before, if this is something where you really want to join, you don't have the funds, but you're super passionate about it. Just email us. Um, do I get anything for it, like a certificate of completion or anything like that? Because, you know, that's that can be a concern for some teachers in traditional education. if They're putting in the time, you know. Yeah, and this affects. Uh, this doesn't affect everybody. Like a cert, like C talking about CEUs or a certificate. You know, um, oh, well, let's talk about the cert certificate first. We are thinking long and hard, and have been for a while about certification through a program. And we have a lot of complex feelings about certifications. But we do know that if you are a if you work for a traditional institution or you want to build your resume, we do know that they can be helpful. And we also know that they can be a little bit motivating if that's if you're somebody that that works for. So we don't want to uh, toss out the idea of certifications. I think what we don't what we want to do is be super intentional about it if we were to go that route to make sure that the bar is high to make sure that if you can't just pay for a membership and then, you know, get the certification and that the folks that have the certification or go for the certification, it really means something. So that's why we're just taking some time to consider, but it might be coming. As, as for CEUs, um, we, every month, if you want us to type something up about your CEUs, we're more than happy to do that for you. So just talk to your administrator to see if, um, if you could earn CEUs through this. Cool. Love that. I know that I can on my matrix at my public school, my traditional school that I'm able to get uh, continuing education credits for this so that's cool all right uh, last question I think will I get specific techniques to use in my classroom yeah yes you will and also a lot more stuff for how we are educators um, there's a lot of mindset stuff and if you're looking for a group of people to uh, inspire you and help you and to get ideas from um, you know the group really offers that if you're someone that needs like more structured workshops and, and, and resources like the group offers that too um so that is there for you yeah love it well i think you answered those questions beautifully sarah <laughs> if anyone else has any questions they could probably just email us right 
Yes. If you have, yeah, of course. If you have a question, uh, definitely email us high at ground of teaching. Uh, you can hit us up on our Instagram. The group right now is, like I said, full of really amazing uh, educators of all of all different types. We have homeschool people. We have traditional public school people. We have reading specialists. We have ecological um, educators. Yeah, lots of well, a couple of ecological educators. People that are starting their own projects related to education. Um, people that are private educators, art educators, and so just a great great group. Love it. Yeah, and the code is podcast monthly, and that's a dollar. You can't pass that up, folks. I guess I should say the reason for a dollar. And the reason for a dollar is because we wanted some sort of, um, well, the, the reason why it's not free is because we've uh, run enough sort of free programs where if people don't have any skin in the game, um, it, the participation falls flat, you forget about it, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and so in order to create some sort of integrity in the group, we, we said like, yes, pay a dollar at first. And then the, the monthly fee does go to pay for all the stuff. You know, paying for the platform, paying for the website, paying for um, all the little integrations that you need <laughs> to do things, which add up 30 bucks here, 40 bucks here. Um, and then paying people to uh, help with pr- bringing programming. So paying you know, folks who are going to help expand this, like Cassandra, who's doing yoga stuff um, or paying for other folks to come and do some things. And then, you know, we are also, you know, paying ourselves for the first time ever, which which feels different and good and sustainable and still weird. But, you know, that's that's a mindset thing that I'm personally doing a lot of work on. <laughs> and that said, again, if you um, it's a dollar to try it out. So very low risk on your end. Um, and if you are somebody who you know wants to commit for a longer time period um, and you've tried out the one dollar or you know that you couldn't you know continue on at thirty four dollars a month because of your budget. Um, if you just email us hi at Grounded Teaching, we could talk to you and we, we don't want a paywall to prevent people who really want to do this work who really can't afford it to do that so um just please be sure that you you email us if that's you thank you to all who have already joined and we're so excited to meet those of you who have yet to join yeah come along come on board all right that's it for us may your day be filled with so much life and joy and springtime fun and stuff that it just makes you ah make you makes you want to scream we love you all bye adios Thank you.